It's New Beer Thursday! Woo! And we're back at Stone, and it's not a Stone episode without Dr. Bill, so we had to bring him back on the show. And uh, we, we are also here with Lori Delk, who's doing 100 beers in 30 days, and that is amazing. So tell me about the 100 beers, 30 days project. Okay, so basically what I do is I drink 100 beers in 30 days in, in sort of a unit. And what I do is I take a certain style of beer uh, and I look at them and taste them uh, consecutively back to back. So last fall when I started this in 2009, I uh, drank stouts and porters, so it was looking at anything from a Baltic porter to an Imperial Russian stout, like the Dark Lord, um, Ooh, all Dark the way Lord. to a smoked porter that they make here at Stone. So oh. it uh, really, it, I find that when you do that, you really start to see all the nuances and the delicate differences between a certain beer and a beer style. So for the month of May, what are you drinking? All Belgians and Belgian all style All Belgian beers. styles beers, okay. Yes. So right I'm on. looking at about uh, half and half uh, from the country of Belgium and all uh, many of the different styles. And yeah, because you did a bunch of brewery beers too, right? So I that, did a bunch of, so I, American, American style, yeah, yes. American style brewery beers Absolutely. or Belgian beers as well. Because right I find, on. especially here in Southern California, we have such amazing breweries that are producing beers that are in that Belgian style, you know, like the brewery, um, for instance, doing their wonderful saisons, awesome. um, which is a favorite, one of my favorite styles. Uh, also, beers that look at Flanders Red, that's another favorite style of mine. So, um, it's, been an, it's been an incredible educational journey. I'm learning so much. She put a lot of thought into the list, too. Yeah. What did you start well, with? Well, he helped me with it. Uh, <laughs> he, was, he was definitely Well, he's very good to go to when you want a list of 100 amazing beers to drink. Yes, so. no, Dr. Bill was definitely my mentor in this whole thing. Uh, we, we got together, we had a lunch. Um uh, over actually a bottle of Chasson Montrachet, which is a, which is a wine. And I'm impressed that you could say that in one fell. <laughs> <laughs> so. we're, we're actually wine drinkers also, so uh, right put that put that list together, and uh, and then I've been working off of that based on not just the list, but uh, what was available. Uh, you know, when uh, when a certain uh, brewery or a certain bar has something on tap, and I go for it. Right on. And, um, and get to taste things, a lot of fresh things that maybe I wouldn't have gotten to taste otherwise. So, what was your very first Belgian beer for this month? My very first one was. Uh, Mallor Brute Reserve, uh, which was on uh, a gift and a recommendation from Bill, and it was absolutely amazing. And, and coming from a wine background and loving champagne the way I do, um, it was absolutely the perfect segue into Belgian awesome. beer because it had so many wonderful champagne um, aromas and flavors, and um, and why it's so perfect that we're ending on a, 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 a beer to champagne. Right on. So this is your you've done 99 beers now, yes. which. I've done that a day, two days, maybe two days. <laughs> Never at the quality and level that you've done though, so that's awesome. Um, so we're gonna finish off the the hundred beers with a, and I'm gonna bro butcher this right now. So it's it's a Deuce Brut de Flanders. Is that right? Is it uh, it's Deuce. By, yeah, Deuce. It's, it's by Evo Bastille. It's Deus. Deus. And Brut right. de Flanders, and along with the Maller Brut, which Laurie started with, they're both uh, done with Method Champenois. Riddling and degorgement, and so they practice all the same things as you would to create a fine champagne, and, and they're just fabulous beers. Right on. So is it a little arrogant to call your beer God? Or <laughs> are you talking about the, the word Deuce? Deus. Well, because Deus is a well, Deus machina means God out of the machine. Well, right. yes, but is it the Latin? The Belgians the have a tendency to name things crazy names. Malheur, misfortune. Who names their business misfortune? <laughs> you know, right. Duval, the devil, Lucifer, right. all kinds of things. So all their different, a lot of the breweries name them things after that. So this is fairly normal yeah. considering it's a day who's just. Yeah, if this but was in Lost Abbey, I'd have no problem. It, 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 it is a truly amazing, amazing beer. Right on. Let's find out. Uh, yeah, I think we need to find that out. So we're going to go ahead and pop this open. And, and I will uh, say Brad, I asked how many for champagne on glasses because. Six. There you six, go. very six. good. I asked for champagne glasses because the first time I ever had this, was the day before the national press release of this beer in Belgium, and I was one of the first two Americans, to, first three Americans ever to have it, and um, we had it in in flutes, which are what they, the specific glass that Evo has designed for this beer, and when we first had it, it was amazing, but it was full of uh, that's uh, an aggressive head almond, <laughs> uh, uh, vanilla. Uh -huh. Oh, that's mine. Thanks. Well, no, I'll, I'll keep licorice. it. Licorice. Oh, <laughs> and now it's definitely mellowed out and he's fine-tuned the process and, and it and it has a lot of great characteristics which I think we'll discover here in a minute. So do you have any like hard rules when it comes to your like the Belgians you were choosing? 
Um, I, I wanted to make sure that certain They're styles good. were good, that they were good, Hopefully, and that certain yeah. styles were um, definitely represented. I know that the popularity of, of triples or triples here in, in, in the U.S., particularly in uh, Southern California, I wanted to make sure I got um, hold of a good amount of those doubles, things that people know, and then to introduce them as Bill did to me some of the more obscure styles, like the Oud Bruin or the, you know the Flanders. And you know I know a lot of people have had Rodenbach Grand Cru, which is one of the finest beers ever made, but they don't may, maybe necessarily understand the style. And that the fact that Oma Gang, you know, Oma Gang made a rouge um, in the Flanders style. So it gives people a, a way to look at Belgian beer by American producers and say, oh, well, I know that brewery and I can taste it and then I can try something oh. new. <laughs> <laughs> he needs some more. And I listened to all of that and I loved it, even though I was pouring. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and do a uh, quick toast here to 100 beers in 30 days Thank and to so Belgian much, styles as a whole. Cheers. 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 So let's try this baby out. Oh, that nose is incredible. Oh, that is. I like this a lot, actually. It's one of the most complex beers I think that I have ever come across. Uh, there is so oh. much uh, going on in the aromatic profile here. I mean, you've got you know spice and um, there's everything from citrus to hay to um, you've got coriander in here and you've got you know baking spices and I, I feel like every time I stick my nose in the glass on this one, it's something new. Oh, right. It's a new experience and that to me is some of the best complex wines in the world and the best beers in the world. Mm -hmm. really Take like it very this. well. There's a lot of descriptors in here. Now, when you taste it, the mouth feels amazing. And you get, once again, you get the anise, you get anise the definitely. almond, you get uh, vanilla, you get, I get cherry stone. Like if you had the cherry pit in your mouth, I get that, the, the, the pit of the cherry. Right. Um, it's just, definitely. yeah, it's amazing. This is very good. Now. Um, Tell me a little bit about like is 100, 100 beers thirty days just some a way for you to get drunk on a regular basis and have people read about it or is there something behind that? Well, um, it's funny because uh, the, how I came about this whole thing was I was running a wine shop in craft um, beer store in New mm -hmm. Orleans, and I was. Oh, is that where the accent's from? The, the accent. It's so sexy. It's, I'm just gonna it's, say. It's North Carolinian. I'm actually from North Carolina. She's North Carolina, yeah. Oh, right but, on. She uh, doesn't call it New Orleans. So you know she's yeah. not from there. No, I'm not from there. Right but on. I lived there for six years and, um, okay. and was the GM of a wine shop. Talk was regularly teaching classes, helping people with their wine cellars, and trying to sort of introduce good, people huh? to craft beer. Really and I woke up one morning and I said, and I was looking at the craft beer section of our store, and I said, well, I have got to do something with this. Like, there are so many incredible wine drinkers who have no idea the incredible complexity of beer. And so I thought, how can I do this? And so I started thinking, should I do 30 beers in 30 days and you know I'd heard about people blogging and I had not ever blogged before and had no tech savviness about me at all and uh, I said no that's not going to work the American attention span is not right. gonna, is not going to go for that and so I said you know what I'm a person of extremes anyway so why don't I just go for the gusto and see if I can do it and I thought if there was any style of beer that would prove whether or not I could do it it would be stouts and porters I mean if you're looking at you know, 13%. Heavy, yeah, heavy, you know, heavy if, stouts. If you can do that, you can do anything. Right. Maybe my, maybe barley wines might be my biggest <laughs> challenge. But, yeah. but um, I want to be there for that month. Yes. Oh, it's, like, <laughs> it's like think of the opposite of a crossover beer. Right. Yeah. That's what you're gonna do. Exactly. Yeah. So and so I was definitely out to prove something. Um, and so anyway, so I thought, you know, while I'm doing this, I shouldn't just be doing this for myself. You know, the education part is great, but. Also, I needed to give back something, so I decided to, and this is the underlying charity for all of my challenges, is uh, Feeding America Second Harvest Food Bank. Okay. Um, and it's, it's become Feeding America, so if you're familiar with Second Harvest Food Bank, it's the same exact organization, they've just renamed it. Um, and then this particular month, we did a Parkinson's research um, fundraiser as well. Awesome. And, um, and, and did a, an event with that. So um, there's always inter there's gonna always be interlocking charities, right. but the, the base foundation charity will always be to feed the hungry that's awesome so you're you're educating people about craft beer you're feeding the homeless and the hungry Wait, you're curing Parkinson's <laughs> so would you say that you're like superwoman or <laughs> maybe someday someday <laughs> cheers to that, so cheers to that. Yes. making money from your beer show 
or no? Blah? I no. Okay. I, no. I, we'll absolutely. We'll absolutely. We'll there. Every every single dollar, and I, I want this to be really clear, is that every single dollar that is ever raised never goes to having me drink beer. I, I pay for that. Um, it all goes to charity. So awesome. whenever there's an event, every single dime goes to. Um, to buy food or to provide meals for them. Well, I'll buy you a beer today. If uh, you'd like to donate to the cause, at the uh, on my blog post, 100beers30days.wordpress.com, there is a PayPal donate button. Um, and whether or not you're a pay PayPal member, you can still sign in uh, temporarily and make a donation, and that will all go directly to Feeding America. We're going to go ahead and go to a pairing, and uh, we're going to do, uh, it's a homebrew pairing this time. It's a brown ale, and uh, it's baby back ribs. It's a classic American brown yeah. ale, and I wanted to show how well the maltiness in a, in a classic brown ale pairs with uh, any type of grilled meat. So we used uh, did a rack of baby back ribs, ribs and with a nice caramelization on it, and also some five-year-old aged Gouda, yeah. so that's just lovely. So too. let's go and check that out. With another master pairings with Dr. Bill. Hey everyone. And uh, so, what are we uh, what are we eating and drinking today? Well, today I thought we'd do a brown ale. Uh, there's no bottle in front of us because it's a homebrew brown ale. Really? It's uh, quite tasty, but done classically in the American style of a brown ale. It's about 5.4 percent alcohol. Okay. And I think you should try it and see what you think. Okay. Brown ales are different from porters, for example, because you don't get many coffee and chocolate notes. What you do get is a lot of caramel. You definitely get nut. That's another good component of it. And then I get a lot of caramel. Sometimes I get uh, mahogany wood. Sometimes I get, if you've ever licked mahogany wood, you know, kind of, I've been doing this for 30 years, so I've kind of tried all these, you know, I can Have describe Have you licked beers. mahogany wood? I'm not saying, but I do know what mahogany wood tastes like in a beer. No, because I've, that's... There's dirt. Well, it's, it's really interesting. It, it's... You know, people use terms like dirt, bramble, mm -hmm. rock. So if you if somebody uses that term and you're not familiar with it, how are you going to know exactly what they're talking about? Would you go about? taste a rock? I would probably wash a rock in, in and then look seri at it. I'm serious. Yeah, seriously. Too. Yeah. Seriously. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with expending your palate and trying all different kinds of foodstuffs. Right. Uh, different wines and spirits and, and beer and, and picking up all these different flavor characteristics. I get this always this mahogany, this this little bit burnt effect, this caramel. I can see And that. nuts are, are a big component. And I, do, I definitely taste the nuts too. And so I think that's very spot on of you. Um, but It tastes like a very average brown ale to me. Right. It's a good representation of an American brown ale. Yeah. I have some really nice, nice cave-aged Gouda. It's... Five years old. It's cave aged. Cave aged. Yeah, they 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 forgot about it somewhere with rocks around it for five years and let it just <laughs> okay. age appropriately. Whether it's a true cave or a cellar or whatnot, but they call it cave aged. Okay. So I'm assuming um, it's a pretty common term, and that's what they used for this particular. I see a lot of cheese. a lot of crystals. Is that yeah? Like try this. I think you're going to be uh, pleasantly surprised big, with the age. Big fan of the crystals. Mm. Brown ales go great mm. with a lot of things. Definitely with the caramel or nuttiness. They go great with aged cheeses. They go great with grilled meats, sausages, different pork. All kinds of pork products go great. Mm -hmm. Beef, lamb, things this like that. This works really well with the cheese. It makes it, 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 it makes it really creamy. Yes, it just really. Mm. It it, it um, the the carbonation adds this uh, breaks down the creaminess and it just lets it. Mm. envelop your whole palate and so it works really well together and that's it's good. really quite enjoyable and then i have some uh, very nice baby back ribs i did a secret uh spice rub and then i even put a little uh, red sauce on on portion of it so you can try it both ways awesome because you know there's grilling and there's barbecuing i'm a fan of the yeah. barbecuing with so the sauce. we can definitely uh give this a shot and see what you think it's got a good amount of spice going on Now see what you think with the beer. Mm. I 
it's not too spicy to where it's gonna, you know, be too overwhelming with the beer. The beer adds some sweetness to it. Definitely. It works really well. I wanna try it with the sauce, actually. Should I just dip it? Let's just dip it on. The sauce is pretty sweet. I'll try it with the beer. I think I like it more with the sauce. The sweetness in the sauce complements the, the, beer, the beer more. Yeah. I think you can't go wrong, basically, with different... I mean, I could do eggs and bacon with this beer, and it would go good. Really? Because the pork would bring out this little smoked bacon, a little caramelization that picks up in the pan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just holds up really well. So there's a lot of great different meat products that go Sorry. with it. I'm double no, dipping. No. That's okay. <laughs> I get it. It's all right. Um, but yeah, no, I think uh, brown ale, like porter, mm. like amber ales, are are these building blocks of the craft beer movement. There are these styles that were really huge in the 80s and 90s, and as we've gone to all these extreme beers, they're kind of semi-forgotten. Right. But for pairing with food, they're, they're, they have such a wide uh, palette of food products that you can pair with them that right. is just amazing. I mean, those three beers, I can pair so many amazing dishes with. Brown ales are definitely a very, uh, very good gateway beer into craft beer. They, since they're so, di you know, they work so well with some. They're, many they're not overly hoppy and bitter. They're not high alcohol. They have flavor profiles that people can recognize. Mm -hmm. Even though it doesn't taste like a macro beer, it does have characteristics like you said, nuttiness, things like that, where people are used to eating and they can go, oh, I, yeah, I can see that. I can see nuttiness, caramelization, caramel, different things like that. And, and I think they can appreciate it. And it's a good way to get them to enjoy uh, a craft beer. Yeah. Well, this has been another great Master Pairings with Dr. Bill. Uh, cheers. Cheers. See you next time. This week's signed copy of Beer Wars goes to our craft beer advocate, Dan from Seattle. He writes, hey guys, I really enjoy the show. I hope to start my own soon. My advocacy story starts in Japan. I wish I could have gone to Japan. After a long time drinking Suntory, Asahi, Sapporo, and Kirin, I was hoping more was out there in terms of flavor and community. I googled bars in Japan and found a link on Rate Beer to a bar called Doll Dress in Osaka, Japan. Doll Dress is a Belgian bar slash S&M clothing store. Why? I have no idea, but I quickly became acquainted with the local and famous beers of Belgium. The bar owners introduced me to a vast and growing community of craft beers called Yi Beer in Japan that are absurdly niche yet amazing right now. Before I left Japan, I stopped at a bar in Tokyo called Dry Dock that actually imported stone beers. Having never heard of or uh, ever tried a stone, I asked the bartender which was his favorite. He gave me the Ruination IPA. I've never been the same. I advocate craft beer every day now. Craft beer is about to explode everywhere, not just in the USA. Dan at Seattle Tap. Thanks, Dan. And if you'd like to submit your craft beer advocacy story, submit to advocate at newbrewthursday.com. Cheers. Boom. Bill, what would you pair this beer with? Oh, wow. That's um, first thing that comes to mind is oysters. I love this beer with an oyster. Uh, it'd be fabulous. Um, that would go really well. A lot of different shellfish would. Um, I'd also like this with white chocolate. Now, white chocolate's not truly a chocolate, right, right. but the characteristics of a white chocolate would go really well with the cocoa butter, would go really well with this beer, and it'd really just cut through it and just play off its nuances, so I think it'd be lovely for right that on. How difficult is this beer to find? Almonds would be great, too. It's not difficult. You could find it here at Stone World Bistro and Gardens, for example, and many of the fine pubs in Southern California. But you can also find it in some of the better beer stores like, um, you know, that do the more specialized beers like uh, uh, Holiday Wine Cellar, Port Bottle Shop, Up My Way, uh, High Times uh, Wine Cellar, uh, the, uh, what's the place down, the drugstore down there? The Best Damn Beer Shop on there has Best it. Damn Beer Shop. They have it. And, uh, you watch the language, jo woman. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and and jo Joey's Place, I'm sorry, Joey, I don't remember the name of it. Uh, South Bay Drugs. So, South Bay Drugs, thank you. He, oh. I'm sure he probably has it too. Right on. Okay, so it's it's fairly easy to find. And so go out, check it out, get some white chocolate, some almonds, some oysters. It's an aphrodisiac apparently. Woo! It's ridiculously it's, good. Yeah, it is, it is ridiculously good. I don't know anyone good. who would not enjoy this. Yeah, this is, this is, and this is a fantastic crossover beer. If you're, right, yeah. even if your girlfriend's like, oh, I want to drink champagne. 
This is good beer for that. <laughs> so, so but Lori, you are awesome. You're Thank doing you great so things much. for the craft, the craft beer. Follow Lori at, at 100 beers 30 days. And uh, we'll have to talk to you about getting a shorter Twitter name because, oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. Not that New Brew Thursday is any better, but anyway. I was going to uh, say, wait. 100 uh, beers, 30 days. More than that. Read the blog, check it out. It's amazing. Donate, please donate. It's awesome. And as always, stay safe and drink Thank beer. You. Cheers. Cheers.